construction is done. So the use of the rubber dam is mandatory in root canal treatment. When properly placed, the rubber dam facilitates treatment by isolating the tooth from obstacles that can disrupt any procedure. Proper rubber dam placement can be done quickly and will enhance the entire procedure. Okay, and here are some of the advantages why we perform or why we isolate the tooth. Patient is protected from aspiration or from swallowing of instruments, tooth debris, medicaments, and irrigating solution. As a clinician, we are also protected from litigation because of the patient's aspiration or swallowing of an endodontic file. So usually, routine placement of the rubber dam is considered the standard of care. And usually, a surgically clean operating field is isolated from the saliva, hemorrhage, and other tissue fluids. The dam reduces the risk of cross-contamination of the root canal system. And it provides an excellent barrier to the potential spread of infectious agents. It is a required component of any infection control program. Okay, that is why we place our rubber dam. We also want to retract and protect our soft tissue. And usually with rubber dam, visibility is improved. Okay, the rubber dam provides a dry field and reduces mirror fagging. And lastly, efficiency is increased. Why? It's because rubber dam minimizes patient conversation during treatment and the need for frequent rinsing. So basically, those are the advantage advantages why we use rubber dam in endodontics. Before we proceed with our rubber dam isolation, here are the armamentaria needed. Our basic instruments, the roots and instrument, different sizes of clubs, rubber dam clamp holder or rubber dam clamp forcep, your rubber dam punch, frame, rubber dam sheet or rubber dam, a template, and the dam floss. Before we proceed to the different methods in rubber dam isolation, first thing to do is to pre-fit the clamp. Okay, while I have mentioned a while ago that there are several sizes of the clamp. So in this manner, we'll be using this uh, size of clamp so that uh, the mesodistal width of the jaw must coincide with the mesodistal width of the clamp. Say for example, the involved tooth we'll be doing is tooth to one. So first things first is for us to prefit the clamp. Okay, so using our clamp holder, hold the clamp and then place labially and then followed by the lingual surface. Okay, so make sure that the clamp is hugging the cervical third of the crown. Okay, so in this manner, you check whether the clamp is secure or not. Okay, so that's how we prefit the clamp in choosing the specific size of clamp. And uh, next thing to do is to uh, secure also the clamp by placing dental floss. Okay, so this is for us to prevent the clamp from uh, aspiration when it's accidentally removed from the tooth surface. Okay, so that's how you secure the clamp using your dental floss. Okay, and then next is to uh, make perforation or hole on your clamp using our template so you place the rubber dome sheet on top of uh, the stump and then again we are doing rubber dome isolation on two to one so we make markings on this okay so your markings depend on which tooth is involved Okay, so you have your upper right quadrant in here, your uh, upper left quadrant, lower left, and then lower right quadrant. So that depends on the different tooth that you will be 
doing. So we created markings already on our rubber gum sheet and then using our rubber gum punch. So we make hole or preparation by basically following the marking. Okay, so you make sure that you have properly punched your rubber gum sheet. Okay, so number one method in rubber gum isolation is we place the clamp together with the rubber gum. Okay, so with our central wing, we make use of we make use of that part in securing with our rubber gum sheet. So in that manner, make sure that the rubber gum clamp is perpendicular with our rubber gum sheet. This is for us to prevent wrinkling later on when we place our rubber gum sheet on the involved tool. Okay, using our rubber gum clamp holder, again, we place it on the involved tooth to one label first and then followed by the lingual. There. Okay, but that doesn't end there. Okay, you need to untuck this rubber gum sheet on the central wing by using your Woodson instrument and also the lingual. This is for us to prevent also saliva from coming in from the perforation or the hole. Okay, so that's how you place your rubber gum sheet and then of course place our rubber gum frame to secure our assembly. So by holding your frame on this end and then stretch the rubber gum sheet on the other side the different contacts of uh, your frame okay so after stretching there okay so uh, you have already isolated the tooth using the rubber gum clump and together with the rubber gum sheet today it is mandatory that the nose of the patient is also covered okay so you need to punch the hole at least a little farther in order for us to cover the nose okay for infection control see after you have placed your temporary filling on the involved tooth now you remove it using your clamp holder and then release okay so that's how you remove your rubber gum assembly Okay, the next procedure is what about clamp first? Okay, so after prefitting the, the clamp, we place first the clamp on the involved tooth, labially and then lingually. So after securing the clamp, now we place our sheet. Again, the glossy part must be directed towards the patient mouth and then the dull part directed towards the clinician. Okay? So you stretch after punching a hole, you stretch your rubber gum sheet and then we place it on the clamp. So careful not to tear your rubber gum sheet. Okay, so that's how we place your rubber gum with this method. Okay, rubber gum clamp first and then followed by rubber gum sheet. Okay, then you need to get your loss for you to secure your clump then of course secure it with your frame okay 
So that's the second method. And then we also have the third method wherein it's all together. Okay, so we remove again after treatment. Okay, for the all together, after prefitting the clamp, now we place our frame on our rubber dam sheet. And then our rubber dam clamp. There. And then place it all together. Labial. And then add the lingual. Then of course, you need to tuck this in. And also add the lingual. Then that's it. That's the all together method in rubber dam isolation. Okay, so those are the different methods in rubber dam isolation. And what if the crown is not complete? Or if you have, say, for example, you do root canal treatment on 2 1, but the crown is somewhat fractured or cut at the cervical third, we have this technique, what we term as split down technique, because we will be utilizing the adjacent teeth as part of securing your rubber dam clamp. So after you have punched, for instance, on 2-1, we also make hole. Say for example that is 2 1. We make hole also on lateral incisor or 2 2 and then 1 1. So we make punch or a hole. On 1 1 and also so in this manner you have created perforation already on this teeth but since we are doing split dam technique from the word split dam we want to create continuity from the central incisor to that of the lateral incisor on the other side so uh, we joined this perforation or if you have your scissors with you you may join those holes together. okay so you have created already that perforation okay so uh, place our clamp on the lateral incisor so after securing our clamp now we place our rubber dome sheet In some cases, they place rubber dam clamp on central incisor on the right. But because of uh, interference as to uh, vision, you may place uh, floss instead. To secure your rubber dam sheet with a floss
thin. But you don't want this uh, floss to interfere with your vision, so you need to cut this uh, floss. Okay, and then we place our rubber dam frame. So you get your floss from the living wall. Okay, so uh, that's how you do the split dam technique and are now ready to perform root canal therapy on 2 1. Okay, so that's split dam technique. So I hope you have learned something from today's demonstration and the different methods in rubber dam isolation. So that concludes our video presentation on rubber dam isolation. I hope you get an idea and be able to perform rubber dam isolation efficiently. This is not only to improve patient safety and protection, but also for a successful treatment outcome. Thank you and good day.